Shalom, Yashrata. Shalom. Shalom. Brakathi Yahweh. Brakathi Yahweh Shai. Brakathi Yahweh. Brakathi Yahweh Shai. Brakathi Yahweh. Shai. Rakaha Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great Muslim who teach one and rule well, who taught me this truth. Peace and salutation to the Akim, the fellow laborers, the hopeful elect. Pushing this truth at risk of the own eyes with the four corners of the earth. And to the Akwa to listen and listen and learning, Shalom. Shabbat the Shema from the Pillars of Benjamin camp. Here with another lesson. And uh, we'll get right into it. Right? Mainstream news, Fox business. Right? And beginning, beginning with the elder apostles on down. Been, they've been telling you, beginning with the elder apostles on down, we've been telling you about famine, man. Right? And now you have mainstream news. Mainstream corporations speaking on this, man. Daily. Right? You see the title of this article? CEO of major food brand issues dire warning, right? Let's look into this word dire. I believe it's fearful. Let's look into it for edification's sake. The etymology, dire. Causing or attended by great fear. Causing or attended by great fear. Dreadful, awful, awful, boding, ill. Fearful, causing fear or dread or terror, right? So the CEO is saying, we got a food problem here. America the Great, Babylon the Great. First world country, the hammer of the earth, right? Through the spirit and power, Yahweh Bishop Yashai, we know it's the will of the Lord, Yahweh Bishop Yashai. Putting the spirit on these Edomites to orchestrate this thing. Let's open with a scripture, with a scripture and then we'll uh, watch this article and attach scriptures as uh, scriptures come to mind, Lord willing. Uh, second Ezra. All right, cause we're about to enter into some. Uh, we're about to enter into a time like no other. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 19, and it reads, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, right? Suburbs, inner cities, cities, people are going to be invading one another's homes. People are going to be going from house to house, rifling, scavenging, right? But shall destroy their houses with the sword, right? They're going to be armed. The sword is a modern day gun. There are going to be groups searching houses with guns, right? And spoil their goods. Spoil means to rob, to take. What goods? They're going to be looking for Campbell's soup. They're going to be looking for brown beans. They're going to be looking for lentils, dried lentils. They're going to be looking for ramen noodles. They're going to be looking for water, right? Why? Because of the lack of bread, right? No food. And for great tribulation, right? Great tribulation. A time like no other. Jacob's trouble, right? And two thirds of our people out here are going to starve to death. Two thirds of our people out here are going to turn into bobbleheads with ribs, with ribs showing. Right? Two thirds of our people out here are going to be eaten or eat. Another human being. This is what's coming. Let's watch this article and attach to my scriptures, Lord willing. Inflation hitting a new 40 year high in the month of March. Americans especially getting hit hard at the grocery store. The price of items like dried beans, canned vegetables, flour, all up better than 10 percent from the same time just one year ago. Joining me right now is the president and CEO of Goya Foods, Bob Unanwe. Bob, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Assess the situation. How do you see inflation today? 
Uh, good to see you, Maria. We are on the precipice of a global food crisis. God created humanity. Humanity has created every way to destroy itself from nuclear, biological, chemical. But now we've waged a war. We've weaponized food. In the Ukraine, between the Ukraine and Russia, they represent 50% of the world. Scripture came to mind. So he said the Mosai, he said the Heavenly Father created man, humanity, roughly paraphrasing what he just said, right? But listen, the earth is not being ruled in righteousness. It's being ruled in wickedness. That's why everything is the way it is. That's why everything is out of order. I just wanted to touch the scripture, scripture because of what he said. Isaiah chapter 24. Right? And, 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 and things didn't continue this way till our Lord returns. Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 24. Verse 5, and it reads, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, transgressed, broken the laws, right? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, Job 9 and 24. The wicked's not, no, the wicked is wicked, man. These, 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 these ruling class elites, these banking families, they're wicked. They're not ruling in righteousness. They're not righteous. They don't believe in the Most High. The law is not for them. The law was given to Israel. Israel being a people for a place. So this is why everything is defiled. Right? Because they have transgressed the laws. Changed the ordinance. Broken the everlasting covenant. Right? Esau Edom. Right? That's why things are the way they are. Let's continue. And that's why Yahweh Shah has to come back. Set up the kingdom of Israel in righteousness to rule on earth as it is in heaven. Let's continue. The world's production of fertilizer. 30% wheat, 20% corn, 2.5 million acres of sunflowers, other uh, food and, and minerals. They also have sand for fracking, sand for glass. And, you know, they, they have, with Russia's doing with their land bridge, they're also cutting off the Ukraine to the sea. They've taken Mariupol pretty much. Odessa is left. If they cut off Odessa, then they basically landlock the Ukraine and they can't export. They can't either plant. Uh, right now, we're in the planting season in southeast Ukraine, where all these products are grown. They've attacked irrigation systems. They've attacked uh, train systems. And they've sent millions of women and children into exile. But let me say that we have provoked, in a way, this war by showing an incredible uh, weakness around the globe and lack of resolve to protect the women, children, and the innocent. It started in wow. Afghanistan. When, when we left women and children behind, usually women and children go first, we left them behind. And now they've sent yeah. millions of women into exile. If the United States, the greatest country on earth, doesn't stand up for the defenseless, who will? We will lose this country yeah. unless we love and build versus hate and destroy. This, we've given the green light around the world for people to abuse right and exploit women and children. We've given that green light by showing well, our weakness. Well, Bob, I, I understand everything that you're saying, and the Afghanistan debacle really triggered so many bad outcomes uh, from, uh, you know, across, from our adversaries across the world. But what I'm really trying to understand is what's going on with the price of food. We're looking at double-digit increases in terms of the price. You are bringing into this conversation a much bigger issue and a potential food shortage crisis. Are you talking about a food shortage crisis where Americans are not going to have access to food, never mind paying up in the double digits for the price of food? America will say, let them eat cake because we have abundance. We're the biggest consumers in the world. The countries that will suffer are the innocent ones in Africa and around the globe. Kind of, that's how America thinks, man. You know what I mean? That's America. That's Babylon the Great. You know, but the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shai has something in store for America, right? 
America the Great, land of abundance, right? Famine is coming. Psalms 49 verse 11, and it reads, Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, right? These Edomites, these ruling class elites, right? This is what they think within their minds, man. We're going to continue forever, right? And their dwelling places to our generations. They call their lands after their own names, right? And that's what America does, man. Right? Isaiah 47. Right? America hasn't been touched. Isaiah 47 verse 8, and it reads, Therefore hear now this, Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, heart being mine, I am and none else beside me. Right? This is what America the Great, Babylon the Great thinks. You know, I am and none and none else beside me. They dwell carelessly, carelessly. They have abundance. Right? First world country. Right? Being brought low. I shall not sit as a widow. Neither shall I know the loss of children. Right? And this is what Americans think, man. Right? What does it say? Dwell, uh, dwell, uh, deliciously. Revelation 18. Let's get it. We're just flowing in the spirit, you know? Revelation chapter 18. Verse 7, it reads, How much she hath glorified herself, right, America, proud, and lived deliciously, right, abundance, not a care in the world, everything you want and need at your fingertips, right? So much torment and sorrow, give her, right? And this is what Yahweh Shemyasha has in store for America the Great, right? For she saith in her heart, in her mind, heart be mine, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow, right? And this is what America the Great, the populace is what their populace thinks. This is what their elites think. Right? America the Great is about to go through famine, martial law, sword, class wars, FEMA camps, more weather phenomena, more plague. Let's continue. We are the biggest consumers of drugs, of trafficking, of, of everything. We're gluttonous. We're going to have to tighten our belt and consume left. less. We've gone from oil independence to oil dependence. We've given up that position to, buy, to have yeah. our oil at cost and to buy it retail and then ship it. Our shipping, when we bring in stuff from Thailand, coconut water, we're paying 10 times the freight we usually yeah. take. Now we have oil in our land and in a pipe with this zero transportation, zero ecological disasters. Yeah. And we got to ship it in a boat and, and, and put uh, the, econ the, uh, the, the world in jeopardy if a, if a, if a, yeah. if a ship is bombed or if it goes aground or, or whatever. So we've gone from right. oil independence to be dependent. We're dependent now on everybody yeah. else. We're the greatest nation on earth. Well, we've been as, dependent yeah. on nobody. As opposed, well, we've given that as up. Opposed we've given to, that up. Yeah, as opposed to having the product. You see that, though? Soybeans is up. Twelve dollars and seventy-five cents. Corn is up eight dollars and seventy-five cents. Oats is down. Wheat is up. Look at that. Right. Right. It's unsustainable. Listen, people are not going to be able to afford. First of all, the money's worth. The 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 the, the, the currency is worthless. People are not going to be able to afford to eat, man. And there's not going to be any food on the shelves. Sirach, Salakia, 2nd Ezra, chapter 6. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 23, and it reads, And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. 
the planted places, the crops, right? They shall suddenly appear unsown, unplanted, unreaped, unharvested, right? The full storehouses, right? These barns, these distribution centers, the shopping, the shop, the shopping, the shopping centers, the supermarkets shall suddenly be found empty, right? No food. This is what's coming, man. No food. Right? No food. Right? We'll see. We'll see what's happening come fall time when the, when the, when this year, 2022, the year of turn up, when this harvest, we'll see with all with, with all these destroyed crops. We'll see how much more weather phenomena. Yo, tornado season, season's coming. We'll see. Let's continue. In a pipeline under the sea, I, I understand the, the analogy and the comparison but, but, that you're making. Bob, let me get let me get your take on this because I, I get what you're but saying. The cost it is of a that, very, Maria. very frightening notion. The cost. What are you seeing in terms of the cost? And do you think that things are going to get worse? So you're sitting there at Goya. The, you are at, 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 at a front row seat. Do you think these prices go even higher later on this year? Let's start there. The biggest component in, in food and anything is, is transportation. The transportation has gone as skyrocketed because we've given up our independence. But, you know, when you have an unbalance in the food production, in 2008, the price of grains tripled. Why? Because we were planting corn for ethanol instead of uh, rice and grains and, and, and other things. You know, the amount of sugar in That's corn to produce ethanol, it takes three gallons of fuel to make five gallons of ethanol. Whereas if you're not using sugar cane, which is much more higher sugar content. so. You know, but when you have an imbalance in the world production, 50% of fertilizer, that's, the farmers are paying double for fertilizer. They're planting yeah. less. The yields yeah. are going to be less. Their costs are going to go up. You know, with 30% of the, the world's uh, wheat production, if that goes unplanted in the Ukraine and yeah. corn and other things, that, we you know, we our world is very, uh, it's, it's on, it's a very... Lamentations 1, Salakia, Joel chapter 1, verse 17, and it reads, The seed is rotten under their clods, right? The seed. Right? It's not yielding. Right? There's stories of farmers destroying, destroying their, cop, their crops, right? The garners are laid desolate. The barns are laid desolate. Right? The storehouses are laid desolate. Their barns are broken down. The barns, they're broken down. For the corn is withered. Let's look at this in the NLT, man. Right? Crops ain't yielding. Crops are destroyed. Weather phenomena is hitting it. Stories come out of, of, of farmers destroying the crops, being paid off. In the NLT, Joel 1 verse 17, the seeds die in the parched ground. Parched ground. And the grain crops fail. The barns stand empty. And granaries are abandoned. Right? These, these, listen. <laughs> you two thirds out here that, 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 that choose not to repent, you're through out here. The Lord's about, uh, the Lord's about to visit this place. The Lord's about to starve this place out. Ribs are about to show. Jake gonna turn into bobbleheads out here, man. With swollen bellies. Let's continue. And unless you have the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai covering, you're through out here, man. Bobblehead with a swollen belly. That's what's up. Repent. Tight balance. And if we interrupt sure. the food production, we will have a food crisis. Prices will go through the roof. We can afford. Yeah, you hear that? Big CEO said we will have a food crisis. Mainstream news, man. Right? 
So Jake gonna see this on mainstream news and panic and, and, and start to take heed. When begin when when beginning with the elder passes on down, they've been saying they've been saying this, man. Let's continue. Supported as a rich country, we're so abundant, but other countries unfortunately will not, and we will be the last ones affected. But like Marie Antoinette said, let them eat cake. Wow, Ryan, jump in. Curious. I mean, we hear about reshoring Bob of manufacturing and bringing everything back to the U.S., which doesn't really seem to be happening. Can you do the same thing with our imports of agriculture? I mean, can we reshore a lot of that so we're not dependent on the world? And we're not in a situation like we are today with the, the whole Russian-Ukrainian war. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite get the question. I'm sorry. Well, can we start to bring some of those imports back to the U.S., where we actually do more planting here and we're not dependent on the rest of the world for our agriculture needs? Well, the U.S. is the largest, uh, one of the largest producers of, of, of food, but we're also the largest consumers. And But if you interrupt the... Uh, production of fertilizers and other crops around the world, it's going to, it's going to uh, dis disrupt that. So, you know, we, we need to, uh, we've, the problem is we've outsourced a lot of, besides food, a lot of other things, and that's driven up the cost of things from drugs into China and chips. Yeah. I was hearing this morning about Ford, they need, you need 3,000 chips in a car to make yeah. to make a, a, the new Ford 150. And we're not making chips, That's we're right. depending on others. We're depending on others for food. We have the food. Well, we will well, be, we've been talking, it's not as yeah. big an issue here. Yeah, well, we've been talking about this reliance now for several years. I do not understand why we're not seeing more progress. I mean, why we are reliant on the CCP, America's number one adversary, for our prescription drugs is just mind-boggling. 70% of the underlying uh, uh, components of our prescription drugs are made in China, Bob. I mean, it's outrageous, but we're going to keep a spotlight on it and hope that Americans... Uh yeah, she said hope. You better hope. Got a Mosai is about to visit this place. Let's close out. Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 4, verse 16, and it reads, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold... I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, right? And this is going back to the Babylonian captivity, right? But it, it, it equates to now. Deuteronomy 30 verse 7 says, I'll, I'll, I'll put these curses upon thine enemies, roughly paraphrasing. Who's your enemy? Beginning with Esau, Edom. Right? Right? Who rules the world? Esau, Edom. Who, 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 where is the great city of the Edomites? America the Great. Babylon the Great. Right? Ezekiel 4, verse 16, once again. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. Right? That's food rationing, man. Right? Drink a little bit of water today. Okay, no more water till tomorrow. All right, we have, we have one tin of brown beans it's got to share amongst a five family house, five five member, five family member household. Okay, a spoon and a half for each each member of the family. Okay, no more water, no more beans till tomorrow. Okay, that's what's coming. It's going to start with government, Daddy Isa, the government, military rationing food. Right. First, we'll start with you go in the supermarket. You're only allowed one. You're only allowed two per family, per household. Then the military, military going to have to step in and ration. Okay? And then it's every household for themselves. Right? And by, by them times, it's, 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 it's who, by them times, it's a strong, it's who can, who can overpower the next family and eat them. Once the food rationing is done, it's about who can eat who. Verse 17, that they may want bread and water and be a stonied one with another and consume away for their iniquity. Right, two thirds of people out here go and consume away for their iniquity in the, because of the lack of food, in the want of bread and water, right? 
They're going to become bobbleheads out here. Swollen, be swollen bellies. Stay prayed up. Pray without ceasing. Kwame Asherala. Wa. Abad. Babal. Shalom.